So we're going to talk about something called the shade report. And you're required to run the shade report towards the end of every pre-design that you do. Once you've drawn your house, you set the setbacks to the correct jurisdiction, you've put in all your obstructions, all your dormers, you've drawn anything that could cause shade on the house, including trees and all the neighboring houses that could potentially shade the home. Now let's talk about those shading things real quick. We've talked about trees in another video, but we haven't really talked about doing other houses at all. Now the reason we draw trees is because they could cause some shade on the roof and make panels get less sunlight. So for that same reason, we wanna draw any neighboring houses that are tall enough to potentially cause shade. The same thing can be said for mountains, but we'll talk about that in another video. You can see in this case, I've drawn three neighboring houses. These houses sit on a hill, so they're extra tall. The goal here is to just draw the rough basic shape of the neighboring house to kind of duplicate the shade accurately. You can see on this one, I didn't even draw the whole house. I just drew the section that could potentially cause shade. I haven't drawn any obstructions, so just draw the basic shape and match it roughly to LiDAR. It's not exactly perfect, but it's close enough. On this one over here, since it's so close to the house, I even drew this chimney right here. Because it's right next to the house we're doing the design for, and it's actually taller than the neighboring house, so I drew it because it could potentially cause shade on our roof. So I've drawn anything that could potentially shade the home, and you're required to do that as well. Once you have everything drawn, and you're about ready to wrap up your pre-design, you need to place panels on the home first. And to do that, you're going to hit the M key on your keyboard. Now, there's different panels that you're required to use for different states. Currently, this house we're working on is in Utah. To check which panels to use in Utah, you're gonna come over here to the Props Wiki. You're gonna click on the tab for State Rules and Info. Now, this has all the states we work in listed at the top here. So I'm just gonna click on Utah. It's gonna take me all the way down to the Utah section. You can see here, the panel type is Trina 320. And here's the technical jargony name that you're gonna see in Aurora. So that gives you the reference on what you should use. Now, here's also listed the inverter type, which currently we only have one inverter that we use for every state, the Enphase IQ7, but sometimes that does switch. So if you ever need to check what the current one is, if it ever does change, it'll be listed here. So always make sure to check, because we do change panels pretty often. So always make sure you're checking for which panel to use. So here in this little dropdown is where we'll select the model of panels. Remember, we wanted the Trina 320s. I'm gonna scroll down until I see the Trina, which is this TSM. And it's the 320 watts, so Trina 320. And then now that I have those in there, I need to add a microinverter. To do that, I click this little plus microinverter button. Then I have to select one in here. There's only really one option, the IQ7, so select that. Now, panel orientation. You can see it's, right now it's set to portrait. We'll talk about when to use portrait orientation in another video. For most roofs, you're just going to use the landscape orientation, so click that. All the other settings for this one, you're just gonna leave as is. Don't touch any of the others. We'll talk about in another video about when you would actually change those. But for the majority of roofs, this is the setup you're gonna be using for now. So now I'm gonna click fill roof face. So now when I click on a roof face, it's going to automatically fill the entire roof with panels. You can see it filled the whole roof face and it did not place panels where we've placed obstructions. That's why it's important to draw your obstructions correctly because we can't place panels over obstructions. Okay, so this roof is all filled up. Let's do this other roof face. I'm gonna hit M again on my keyboard, make sure all my settings have carried over, hit fill roof face, and click on this roof face to fill it. So now my whole roof structure is maxed out with panels, which is what we want. Now the whole purpose and goal of placing panels and running the shade report is to make sure that this is a worthwhile account for both the customer and for Blue Raven Solar. We wanna make sure that it's a good house for solar from a business end. We don't wanna waste our time going to a house that is gonna be really hard to sell because it's not producing a lot of electricity from its solar system. But it also helps the customer as well. If the customer has a really bad roof or solar and it's really shaded, we're gonna to have to use more panels to get the same amount of electricity as a smaller system on a good house. Now each individual panel is gonna be the same price no matter how well it's producing. So if you have a panel on your roof that's only producing 30% of what it should, you're gonna to have to have a little over two more panels to just equal one panel. So you're gonna be spending a few thousand dollars more just to equal one panel. That's not a good deal for a customer. So it helps them make a wise financial decision as well. So once we have all our panels loaded onto the home and it maxed out, we're going to run the irradiance. Come up here to the top where there's this irradiance button and click it once. Sometimes this can take a long time to load, so you just gotta be patient. But once it's all loaded, you'll see the roof and the panels will all change color. So we can see now that both the roof and the panels have changed to a kind of a yellow color. 
and you can see the color over here is a little bit darker than the yellow over here on this side. So the darker area has a little bit more shade on it, so the brighter colors are getting better sunlight. You can check that by the TSRF, which you can see right here. Over here we have an 81% TSRF. Over on this side we have 86. That's just the sun simulation to tell it how much sun it access it's going to get across the full year. Now, important to know, if I remove or delete one of these panels, notice the roof is still colored, but all my panels just turn black. To run the shade report accurately, we need all those panels to be colorful, essentially. So if I were to run the shade report right now, it would not be accurate because my panels are all black. So whenever you make changes, remove a panel, you need to come back up here to Irradiance. You can see there's a refresh button that's now appeared. Just click that refresh button once and wait for the Irradiance to reload. See, now they're all in color again. I can go ahead and run the shade report. However, I want the roof to be maxed out when I run the shade report, so I need to put that panel that I deleted back in. So before you run the shade report, it's very important that you save your project. So come up to the save icon here and click it once, and wait for the saving process to be done before moving on. Once that's saved and your panels are fully colored, come over here to the left side and click on documents. Over here in the middle you see shade report, click that once. Once your shade report loads, you're looking for a particular number here. And in the summary section here, you can see this little chart. Now what you're looking for is over here on the most far right column where it says annual TSRF percentage. You're gonna go all the way to this column and you're gonna go all the way to the bottom row. So remember, last column, bottom row, far bottom right corner of the chart. You're finding the percentage of the TSRF annually across all the panels on the roof here. And this one is 83.4%. This is a good house for solar. Now, the limit we're looking for is 70%. Anything below 70% would be unqualified. So if this number here was below 70% right now, I would have to go and then unqualify the account. In this case, this one passes. So we're gonna go back to the design. So we're just gonna take our pictures and upload them to the account on Zendesk. Then we would just mark it as complete and be done. And we'll go through that in another video.